Welcome to Main Street Living. This program offers you the opportunity to participate in a worship service led by pastors and congregations of the Lutheran Church Missouri Senate from your surrounding area. On today's program, God is even in, maybe especially in those scary, challenging places where and when we need him most. Jesus offers assurance that we should not ever lose heart. The service will begin after this opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father, most merciful God. We confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name, Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for all who believe in his name. He gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Old Testament lesson is written in Isaiah chapter 44, verses 6 through 8. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me there is no God. Who is like me? Let him proclaim it. Let him declare and set it before me, since I appointed an ancient people. Let them declare what is to come and what will happen. Fear not, nor be afraid. Have I not told you from of old and declared it? And you are my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? There is no rock, I know not any. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is written in Romans chapter 8, verses 18 through 27. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. 
For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is according to St. Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 through 30, and 36 through 43. He put another parable before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared also. And the servants of the master of the house came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have weeds? He said to them, An enemy has done this. So the servants said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he said, No lest in gathering the weeds you root up the wheat along with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will tell the reapers. Gather the weeds first, and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples came to him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, the one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed is the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are gathered and burned with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all lawbreakers, and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
grace to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This morning, I'm preaching this sermon on Saturday, May 2nd, 2020. Even though it is being broadcast on this seventh Sunday of Pentecost, July 19th. There are lots of things on my mind, and there were also lots of things on your mind on Saturday, May 2nd, 2020. I've just read the reports that there are 850 coronavirus infections in our Woodbury County of Sioux City, Iowa, and there are over 700 coronavirus infections in Dakota County of South Sioux City, Nebraska. Remember that feeling of dread when back in your school days you were told that there was going to be a pop quiz or an unexpected test? That often brought on a feeling of panic, followed by the thought, if only I had studied more, I would be ready. But then perhaps you also have had the experience of your teachers saying, but it's an open book test, and all the answers are right there. You have all the information you need. Whew, what a gracious teacher. It seems to me that nothing could have prepared us for what happened basically beginning of March 2020, and even earlier in 2020 in different parts of the world. In our gospel lesson, when Jesus relates the parable of the farmer planting the seeds, he tells his listeners right at the onset that the events of the story may be compared to the kingdom of heaven. Can we say today that the coronavirus events of the last few months may be compared to the kingdom of heaven? This tip from the teacher may prompt them to listen carefully as Jesus provides his explanation. But even this information is not enough for the bewildered disciples who wait until the crowds leave before they approach their beloved teacher to ask for extra help. They confess their need. Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. Such willingness to ask for help. And we could also have that willingness to ask our good and gracious Lord for help not only in these times of uncertainty, but every day of our lives. Lord, explain to us the meaning of this coronavirus. A good first step to learning is realizing just how much we have to learn or how much we don't know. We notice that the disciples recognize their need and want to learn. They turn to Jesus for an explanation and illumination. Their hearts are open. They are ready to receive the wisdom of Jesus. And we would be wise to follow the disciples' example. Wouldn't we all be better off if we would not try to pretend that we understand everything or that everything in our lives is just fine? Thank you. What would happen in our lives if we had the vulnerability to say, I need some help. I'm not able to do this on my own. Chances are someone, or perhaps even several someones, would offer support and guidance. Life is not meant to be a test that we struggle through without any help. And Jesus demonstrates a heavenly open book test when he responds to the disciples with insight and instruction. Jesus provides the disciples with encouragement and wisdom that will help them as they endeavor to follow and serve him. It's as if the test they are preparing for is actually their discipleship. And Jesus, as a teacher, supplies them the answers. They need to be faithful and effective. As Christians, it is often easier to be the one who offers help than the one who receives it. There are times, however, when we need to follow the disciples' lead and ask for assistance. Jesus encourages this attitude of seeking for wisdom by reminding them, let anyone with ears listen. Jesus always wants to teach us. 
we need to be ready to learn. Jesus begins by informing his followers of the very real dangers that exist in the world. The farmer does everything right. He plants good seeds and faithfully tends his fields. Despite his diligence, an enemy appears and spreads weeds throughout the crop. The story reminds us that despite our good intentions and best efforts, there can be setbacks and obstacles that threaten to ruin even the best plan. In 1907, my wife's grandfather immigrated to the United States from Russia. He ended up in northern South Dakota in a little town called Yale. He married but lost his wife, two children, and a brother to the 1918 Spanish flu. In a sense, the wife would have been my wife's grandmother. So my wife's grandfather married again, a woman from Canada who came back to South Dakota. My wife's mom was a child of six siblings. Incidentally, the great-grandma mother of my wife's grandma died of the Spanish flu in Canada. Also, in the 1960s, my wife's grandma died of a stroke at age 61. Her grandpa married again for the third time, a woman who was Lutheran. He was Mennonite. They went to each other's church every other weekend until he died. And that's the grandma who was at our wedding in 1985. She died a few years ago at the age of 104. A few weeks ago, I was visiting with my Aunt Rose from Huron, South Dakota, just a few miles from Yale, South Dakota. My uncle is in the nursing home, and she can't visit him physically because of the virus. And she visits through the window. We visited about my cousin Carla, who died in January of 1970 at the age of eight. I was nine. Just a few weeks ago, I found out that she died of the Asian flu, which hit the United States again in late 1969 and early 1970. Before that, the Asian flu was around in 1957 and caused about 70,000 deaths in the United States. It started in China in January 1957. I also found out that the first flexible plastic IVs were introduced in 1970, but not in time for my cousin. We know today our valuable IVs are in our medical hospitals in helping with the healing of thousands of medical illnesses. Last evening, one of our moms texted and mentioned that her two daughters have been exposed at their different jobs. And I also found out that one of our grandmothers has been exposed at work, all three individual members of our congregation. And now we are hearing of all the packing houses closing and what to do with the livestock on the farms because there is no place for them to be butchered. Falling grain prices because there is too much grain and no use for livestock and closed ethanol plants. And 28 million people unemployed in the U.S. Simply hearing Jesus acknowledge that there are times when things go wrong can be assuring. We often place a heavy burden on ourselves by imagining that our actions and our faith completely control all the events in our lives. Sometimes we want to believe that our faith should protect us from every misfortune. The truth remains that there are other factors at work in the world. Sometimes these misfortunes are the result of evil intentions. Sometimes bad things simply happen. Jesus is warning that we should anticipate challenges and interference along our journey can be very helpful. Jesus states clearly that things go wrong and that events do not always work in our favor. Even the best laid plans and the most good-hearted intentions can be foiled through no fault of our own. Sometimes we can point to a concrete cause other times, we might be baffled by how circumstances have seemingly lined up against us. In any case, we can be reassured 
that a string of unfortunate events in our lives does not indicate that we are separated from the love of God. And after visiting with my wife's aunt and also visiting with other individuals, they continue to worship their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, no matter what the circumstance in their lives and continued to look forward to the future. Misfortune and great need are not outside the realm of God's concern. God is even in, maybe especially in, those scary, challenging places where and when we need him most. Jesus offers assurance that we should not ever lose heart. Back to our text, the natural impulse of the householder's slaves is to immediately rid the field of the threat. They want to gather up the weeds and destroy them. It comes as a surprise to them when the master cautions them to not be too hasty. He warns them that they might destroy good plants while they are rooting out the dangerous weeds. The plants, he explains, can look very similar when they are young. The slaves must wait until the plants mature and reveal their true characteristics. Jesus seems to be encouraging us to be very careful, making judgments about others. It can be difficult, he teaches, to discern which is the weed and which is the valuable weed. We wouldn't want to toss out the precious crop in our haste. It's better to allow them both to grow. The farmer will make that judgment at a later time. The parable can remind us of the importance of offering grace to one another. It is not our job to judge each other. We can wait and allow God to do that. The person who might, to our critical eyes, seem to be of little value may in fact be someone who is loving and serving God the only way they can. Instead of ignoring or disdaining someone, we need to care for all of God's people. We might just be surprised at who turns out to be of great value. During this time of pandemic, we've had lots of small opportunities to help people and also bigger opportunities to help. I found out that one of our teacher friends enjoys liver and we don't as much. So we gave her four packages from our butchered meat from South Dakota. And then I mentioned to my wife that we should give her something we enjoy too. So we included in our gift two packages of pork chops. Our secretary had tears in her eyes and didn't have toilet paper. And we had toilet paper, but we didn't have water for our little granddaughter. And so we made a trade. We gave an elderly couple in their 80s two rolls of toilet paper to get by, and we gave four rolls to another young family, all out of our small stash. We knew the Lord would provide in his own way, and he did, as always. Jesus is warning his followers not to be too eager to start weeding. In the process of trying to rid themselves of the weak link, they might hurt those who are trying to love and serve the Lord. Jesus knows that an unlikely group of people can come together, united by their faith in God, and together those followers can shine like the sun and spread God's hope and grace near and far. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us now pray the prayer our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. 
the Lord look on you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Thank you for tuning in to Main Street Living this morning. It is my hope that you have been blessed by this presentation. If you are able to attend services, I would like to invite you to worship with us. If you are close to the Sioux City area, please join us at Redeemer Lutheran Church. This broadcast is dependent on the financial support of viewers like you. We need your help for this broadcast to continue. You can help by sending a contribution of any amount to the address below. The website also has several ways in which to contribute. It also contains much more information about the program and also links to other LCMS websites. Thank you again for joining us this morning and have a blessed week this week. We will see you again next week at this time on this station.